At this year's WWDC conference, Apple unveiled an external GPU enclosure kit for developers meant to plug into any Thunderbolt 3 supporting Mac to boost performance. The eGPU kit consists of an RX 580 video card, a SANA eGFX Breakaway Box 350, a Belkin USB-C to 4-port USB-A hub, and finally a promo code for $100 towards the purchase of a HTC Vive VR headset. The RX 580 card included in the developer's kit is as expected, a reference design card from Sapphire. Roughly speaking, outside of the enclosure, it is a 6 teraflop card, where the Radeon Pro 460 and 560 built into the 2016 and 17 MacBook Pros are right around 1.9 teraflops. So the RX 580 delivers about triple the raw computing power of the discrete GPUs. The Sonnet developer enclosure delivered 60 watts of charging power, which is enough to keep our 15-inch MacBook Pro from draining even under full load and it will allow it to slowly charge under lighter loads. But the 60-watt version isn't available outside of the developer beta. The $299 retail version only provides 15 watts, so you'll need to plug into another source of power or wait for the more expensive Sonnet 550, which will be available in late September and provide a full 87 watts of charging power. It's quieter using the same cards than all of the other enclosures we've tested. Fully stressed, the enclosure hit 51 decibels at 3 feet from the case and 40 decibels at idle. For comparison, a 2016 MacBook Pro under load is about 36 decibels and about 31 decibels at idle. Without relying on third-party hacks, Apple's eGPU implementation in High Sierra is very much in its infancy right now. There are a bunch of restrictions, including the lack of clamshell mode, no current support for HDMI audio, no sleep support for attached Mac, and a few other things. What we don't want to see is Apple forcing anointed case and card combinations on users. An open case that supports the Thunderbolt 3 protocol and a wide selection of compatible video cards to choose from will help the daring users who want to give it a shot. That way, the Final Cut Pro crowd can get optimized AMD cards, and the Adobe gang can get NVIDIA. Interestingly, the Sonnet Breakaway Box runs on Sierra with relatively simple hacks required to get it going, but the RX 580 GPU does not. Currently, there's no way to compare Metal to Metal 2 in High Sierra. As we mentioned, the AMD card in the developer kit does not work in Sierra, and the NVIDIA cards that we're currently using in Sierra do not work in High Sierra. Thunderbolt 3 will hit you for about 10% of any given card's maximum potential performance-wise. Connecting to older gear through Apple's Thunderbolt 2 adapter will chop off about 20%, and connecting to an older Thunderbolt 1 Mac will see losses of nearly 50% of a card's maximum power. We tested the developer eGPU kit connected to our top-end 2017 15-inch MacBook Pro with an RX 560 4GB graphics card running the Beta 6 version of High Sierra. In Geekbench 4, the external RX 580 scored an impressive 122,478 in the OpenCL test and 124,312 with a 4K display plugged into the GPU, both almost three times faster than the best available graphics in the MacBook Pro. In comparison, our 2017 5K iMac with a Radeon Pro 580 8GB, which is based on the same GPU, scored 117,000. We think that's very impressive performance. An RX 580 plugged directly into a PCI slot scores about 132,000, so real-world performance loss is very minimal. And even with that loss, it beats out the best available graphics card in the 2017 5K iMac. The Bruce X test favored the eGPU kit, finishing in almost half the time. Though, we did have to connect the eGPU to an external monitor to get it to work properly. For our own stress tests, we used DaVinci Resolve. We ran our hardest test, a 20-second 4x4K project, and saw a 69% improvement using the eGPU kit. In our 5-minute 1080p test, it was 27% faster than the internal graphics. We also saw a 29% improvement in our 5-minute 4K render. Keep in mind, this is still a beta version of High Sierra, and we expect the performance and usability to improve once full support for the technology arrives in the spring of 2018. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide, which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media, and we'll see you in the next video.